Okay, folks, we're back now and we're going to work on removing the strings and the tuning pins and eventually the plate. And we've got a few additional tools that we've brought in to help with that. We've got a, uh, just a student grade tuning lever right here. Then I've got a, a choice of a few additional tools here. We've got a vice grips that may help us with getting some of these posts out. We've got a small crescent wrench, adjustable wrench there. Wire cutters, these are going to be necessary and you need really good wire cutters. Uh, because these are high carbon steel strings and they will mess up a poor set, a cheap set. Um, not sure why I have these, but there they are. Then I've got a drill with what's called a piano tuning pin socket mounted in this drill. And these are available online. You can find them at Amazon. You can find them on eBay. If we start selling them, I'll put a link down below but these run about twenty dollars they're not terribly expensive if you're going to do several jobs you might find it worth having these you'll will you'll see us use this one once we have the uh piano detention and once we have the strings themselves off we'll use this to spin the tuning pin out um, deviating somewhat from my previous rule i do use a uh, drill for larger flathead screws. These, these are going to be a little bit easier to control. When it comes tight to start, time to start taking plate screws out, which is after all the strings are off, we'll use this for quick and easy removal of those. Now, the old way of doing it, I'm going to demonstrate first, which is where we detention strings and then we pry the, what's called the becket, that's the wire, the point where the wire bends and goes into the tuning pin. We'll show you that in a minute. We pry that out with an ice pick or an awl, some a pointed tool. Then once we have that coil off that tuning pin, we can back the tuning pin out, cut the coil, and remove the string. We'll show you that. Um, faster way, since I have to do a lot of these, and you want to be very, very careful with a tool like this and be familiar with all the, the safety requirements, we will actually, uh, here in the shop, just come through and cut all the strings off um, very rapidly and get rid of the strings that way and then spin the tuning pins out. Now, you may have access to a tool like this, but it's certainly something you need to be familiar with before you start uh, doing something like that because you can get hurt doing that. Do this at your own risk. All right, so that said, we're going to take a string off the traditional and very slow way. Normally, when I'm detensioning a piano, I like to gradually let tension down. Um, you may have heard the uh, tales of pianos exploding from tension and that sort of thing. Mythbusters actually did an episode on this, and you can probably look that up, where they had a grand piano tuned up to tension and then set it on fire. And basically what happens in a fire like that is all the tension relaxes on the strings kind of gradually and all at the same time. I personally have not seen a situation where a plate cracked because there was excessive tension in one section and another, but it pays to be on the safe side. So what I do when I'm using a tuning hammer to de-string a piano is I will detension one string on each note. Now see there's three tuning pins here in this section that comprise one note, and that carries through to the low tenor here. In the bass section, we're going to have two strings Per note, so I would detension the top of, or, or the one string of each of those uh, uh, notes there, and then down here in the bass we just have a single string per note, and I would just go ahead and detension those. So the pattern would look something like the top tuning pin on all of these all the way through here, and then probably something like the bottom and top, bottom and top, bottom and top here all the way through, and then I would detension all the singles. I would come back through and do the middle pin on each of the unisons here, all the way down. Then I would get these middle pins right here on the upper bass section. These have already been detensioned by this point. And that second pass, all of this section is actually detensioned. Then I would come back through and I would detension the bottom string on each of these all the way to here. And we're going to turn it about a half a turn. And that's going to take tension uh, down. You do want to do that because my understanding is there's over 100 pounds of tension on each string times roughly 225 
notes, you've got quite a bit of tension uh, on, on the instrument as it is right now. So we're going to do just a little bit of that as an example. Then I'm going to just cut the strings off. So I'm going to do one string right here. I think, though, right now, I want to go ahead and get these action posts out of the way where I'm going to be working. There are flat places on here that you can use. You can uh, grab like so with an adjustable wrench. You could use vice grips. In our case, we're discarding these, so I don't care if they get marred during the removal process or not. If you're going to be putting these back in because you're retaining your original action and key set, then you'd want to take care to preserve these without marring them up. These simply unscrew, they're threaded. In most cases, they are threaded where they go up into the wood that is behind this metal plate here. All righty, we're going to undo that right there. Be careful when you do this. Try not to slip. Some people may want to wear gloves because a lot of these edges are sharp, and if you slip off, you stand a decent chance of cutting yourself. And then they're going to ask you if you got a tetanus shot, and no matter what you tell them, they're going to tell you you need another one. I just got one last week. Well, we might as well give you another one anyway. That's what they do to you. All right, so here we go. I'm going to loosen these two tuning pins here, and then we're going to remove the coil, as I described, and remove that string. I'm going to show you how to do one or two that way. Then we're just going to cut the strings off and proceed with the video. So I'm going to loosen. I'm going to go ahead and do a full turn on these, make it just a little bit easier. Let's see where that Beckett is. Daryl, you may have to kind of zoom in a little bit. We're going to get this turned where you can show them there. So here is the Beckett. You can see where the string is going into the tuning pin. That little piece is called the Beckett. I will usually work in something like this right here, get underneath it, pry it out just like that. And that string is now off. We're going to do that to this one right here. I see the Beckett kind of at the 9 o'clock position right now. I'm going to bring it around this way. Get in it right there. You can tap. And we're going to pull that. Well, that one's going to fight me. Now, again, if you were restringing a piano and doing a restoration, you wouldn't want to scratch this plate all up. We're discarding the plate. It's going to go to a recycling facility. So we don't care if we scratch this up. All right, now I've got those out of the way. I'm going to cut the, cutting the coils off is going to make this easier to manage. Just like this. Okay, they're cut off. And now I'm able to remove this string. Strings typically in the tenor section and treble section are going to go around the, the hitch pin. These are the hitch pins down here and come back up and go on another tuning pin. Bass strings typically are one string to a hitch pin because of the way they're, they're wound. We'll loosen one of those and I'll show you that right now. So you would remove all of the strings just like that right there. Detention of everything at one time, then come through, cut your uh, strings after pulling the becket from the tuning pin. Let's go ahead, we'll take off a bass string and I'll show you how those are. All right, I'm gonna take a tuning hammer. It's actually not a hammer, it's a lever. I'm gonna get in the becket, pry that out just like that. Okay. Depending on what you want to invest in tools, they also make a string hook, which is basically a T-handle with a hook at the end. You can hook on and pull that off of there. We have them, but sometimes I just go ahead and do it this way. So the base string is off. There's no real need to cut this coil because it's not behind a pressure bar. I'm going to go underneath here and detach it, and we'll show you what that end looks like. See, the end on a base string is typically a loop. So it's going to be one string, uh, sing single strings there in the bass section, and then they loop around into the tenor and treble section. You know, if you have a recycling facility nearby, this would sometimes be considered dirty copper. Most of these are going to be copper wound. Some of them are steel wound and, and won't have much recycling value, but it beats going to a landfill. All right, so I'm going to get set up here real quick to cut these strings off. You know the, the simple way to do it with hand tools. Now we're going to get these cut with a cutoff wheel. Oops, almost forgot. We've got to take out some tuning pins. 
So using the aforementioned tool here, which is a piano tuning pin socket, about $20 on Amazon or eBay from various sellers, I've got this chucked in a pretty torquey drill. This is a half inch drill. You can see it's got an, uh, an auxiliary handle on it here to help hold on to it. You might be able to use a hammer drill. I have not bought any attachments to use for that. I prefer this, just something that I got used to over time. So we're just going to put this on here, and it's important that you don't press in while you're unscrewing this. It is threaded. It's reverse threaded. It's uh, not reverse threaded. It's lefty loosey, just like on most uh, fasteners. But if you stay pressing in, it'll just char that hole in there, and the tuning pin really won't extract. So in a way, you kind of have to pull it out at the same time that you're spinning it. So here we go. All right, so there, that's out. And they're kind of warm when they come out, so be careful with them. Just pile them up on the key bed or something and get them out of the way. Now, if you want to bad enough, you can actually just spin these out the good old-fashioned way, like I did when I was... 10 years old, working for a nickel an hour in my dad's shop. Okay, I was 12 and I made a dollar, but you get the point. So you can also just spin them out with a hammer if you don't want to invest in that particular tool there. Okay, so now we're going to get geared up to cut these off and show you the quicker way to do it. Okay, folks, as my esteemed colleague, Daryl, behind the camera pointed out, um, we need to just touch on some of the safety. Uh, sometimes I forget to do this because my glasses are actually made out of safety glasses lenses. I think it's polycarbonate lenses, but you want to make sure that you've got eye protection because cutting any of these wires, they can spring back very, very quickly. Even this string that's been on this piano for probably 100 years still has a little bit of a bend to it, and when you release it, it wants to pop, and I've been cut numerous times from strings, so gloves are a so-so thing, wear gloves if you want to, but eye protection is pretty much mandatory, it's very important that you do that. Whether you wear a full face shield or whether you wear safety glasses, have something over your eyes. Another uh, good item to have would be ear protection, matter of fact, cameraman Daryl has his on right now. Uh, because when we go to cutting and using anything like a, anything powered like this, very high frequencies, it's very loud. Um, it's the type of thing that could cause hearing damage over a period of time. So we always want to wear hearing protection when we're using these. Um, the tool that I'm about to use, which is this cutoff wheel, is going to throw sparks. There's always the possibility of something catching on fire. Uh, I like to have a fire extinguisher handy uh, so that we're ready to use that in an instant should that be necessary. I only had one instance. Uh, matter of fact, we were filming. If I can find it, we'll drop the video in right here. But I was demonstrating use of a plasma cutter and set a roll of steel wool on fire. So these things do happen, and it's best to have your safety equipment handy. So uh, that said, some people who are sensitive may want to have some type of a dust mask on because there's a lot of dust in these old pianos. Um, but other than that, I think we're good to go, and I'm going to put my, my uh, hearing protection on. I've got glasses on. We're going to cut the strings off this piano. Let's see what we got here. All right, Daryl, those are going to throw your way, so just watch where you are. cleaned off we're going to cut the treble strings off I'm sorry the bass strings off those were the treble all right we're going to clean this up and we'll show you how uh, well I've already shown you how to get tuning pins out so off camera we're going to let me take this off so I'm not yelling at you guys so that's all Cut off, the strings are cut. We're going to clean those off, get the rest of the tuning pins out, and then we're going to talk about removing the plate. 